turned in your book to page 731. Section 25.2, we're going to talk about roundworms and rotifers today. Oh, yeah. Oh. Bro, what's the last section we're doing? 25.4. Mr. Willis. Yes. Can I please just look at my quiz to see if nope. I won't bring a pen up? I just want to see if I got missed one or two. Nope. Please. You have to wait. No. I think I know what you're talking about. Okay. Page 731. Page 731, that's correct. Now, the last time we talked, we talked about flatworms. That's the first phylum of bilaterally symmetric organisms. The next phylum of bilaterally symmetric organisms are your pseudocelomates. They have a, a, a body cavity, but it's not completely surrounded by mesoderma. I hope you remember the discussion we had on body cavities. Flatworms were acelomates, roundworms and rotifers are pseudocelomates, and all the rest of these are coelomates. So today we talk about the pseudocelomates. And they're your roundworms and your rotifers. A couple of things about them. Most of them are free living. That means they, they aren't parasites. They don't have to live in other organisms. They're out there in the environment. A lot of them are in the water. A lot of them are in the soil. It's said that if you take, it's ca been calculated that if you take a teaspoonful of soil, it can have up to a million roundworms in it. That is gross. Most soil is filled with these things. And if you take soil and you look at it under the microscope, you can find them wriggling around. They're real small, though, the microscope. They won't hurt you. They live in the soil, and a lot of them, uh, I think I showed you the video where the, where the fungi captured one. Remember in its little hoops? Yes. This was, I think, Leah, before you were here. Anyway, they have a one-way movement of food through their digestive tract. It doesn't go in the mouth and come back out the mouth like it does in cnidarians and flatworms. It goes in the mouth and comes out the anus. So that's a one-way movement, which is good because if you have a one-way movement of food, you can continually feed. You can eat in this end and excrete in that end. At the same time? At the same time. That's what earthworms do. That's what most worms do. And that's a more efficient system. If you have just a one-way tube, you can only eat half the time because you're excreting the other half of the time. That's awesome. I've been training my life. This is Ascaris. This is a round worm. And this round worm is actually, uh, is actually a parasite. It's a parasitic lung worm. And it can grow in people's lungs. This was actually taken from a cow, I think. Or a sheep. And I'll let you pass it around. How do you breathe with that, like, in your it's lungs? crawling around there in your lungs. Can you feel it? Cows, yeah, I, I think you can. I have a cow bone at my house. Yeah, somebody told me you get extra pay for bringing bones to you. Do you have a cow bone? Mm -hmm. Bring it in. We'll look at it. I can I have it? Yeah. Cow bone. Is it? Has it been? Uh, is it clean? What? Put it in some. Put it in some water with, with some bleach. No. Get it all white, and then bring it. I don't want nasty. What bones do you want? What bones do you want? Bring me forehead. Bring me forehead. Anything you bring, it needs to be clean. And if I can use it in my collection, I'll bring it to you. Actually, I got a cow bone in my collection. Yeah, I'll bring it to you. 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 Yeah, I'll bring most roundworms exchange gases and excrete metabolic waste through their moist outer body coverings. The outside of their body is moist and thin, and they can take in oxygen right through their skin and excrete um, some of their like carbon dioxide waste. We breathe out our carbon dioxide. They can excrete theirs right through their skin. Like sweat? Kind of like sweat, but it's a gas. It just filters through. 
They have ganglia. Ganglia is almost like a brain. It's, it's a bunch of nerve cells all together in a clump. And they have uh, nerve cords associated with the ganglia, very similar to flatworms. Here is a look at the body of a flatworm, of a roundworm, if you were to cut it in half and be able to look inside of it. They do have a little brain here, which your book would say it's anterior, anterior ganglia. Anterior means towards the front. Ganglia means a bunch of nerves in one location. That's the brain. And you can see the nerve cords. They have a dorsal nerve cord on the top and a ventral nerve cord on the bottom that runs the entire length. This is that asterisk worm, the one you're passing around. Can round worms regenerate if they cut in half? Um, I don't think so. Okay, well, even a flatworm has one. Flatworms can. Like, like this worm cut right down the middle? I think it, I don't think this can regenerate. Okay. Yes? The little squiggly things on that thing, are those like on, in the straw? Here? No, no, no. In the actual jar. Yeah. They're coming off that. Are those the spiccules? I didn't get to see it. Those little squiggly things? Yeah. yeah. It looks like that's part of its intestine coming out of it. It's broken. The intestine is this long tube right here that food goes down. Okay. Would we not be able to see the spicules? The spicules? Yeah. That aid in sperm transfer? Yes. Yeah. Looks like that's only on the back of the, near the anus. I don't know if you can see him or not. Video footage. Yeah. What should I do? Yes. Always do that. Now click it again. Where should this not go to you? Always. Here's a soil roundworm. This is a video I was talking about with the fungi. Both fungi are saprobes and get their nutrients from non-dead organic matter. However, some fungi are parasites and obtain their nutrients directly from living matter. Here we see a round worm that has been surrounded by the poops of a predatory fungus. Once the worm has been captured, fungal hyphae then penetrate the prey and digest it. That's one of the soil roundworms I was telling you about. And sometimes fungi in the soil will capture those and eat them. Digest their bodies. How big is the fungi compared to those? Well, remember, fungi have those hyphae that grow all around. There are fungi as big as football fields or bigger. What's big as football fields? Fungi can grow underground. Muscles cause the body of a roundworm to move in a thrashing manner. Manner as one muscle contracts and another relaxes, so they kind of move like snakes. These muscles pull against the outside body wall and the pseudocelum. Remember, they have an open space called a pseudocelum that allows for better movement. So lots of muscles in these things. This shows a trichinella. Trichinella is one of these types of uh, round worms. It's a cyst. Wait, so cysts are really worms? I might have this slide. Yeah. is a type of roundworm. It talks about it in your book that will insist itself in the muscles of an animal. Which means somehow, and, and by the way, this is a parasite, even though most roundworms are not parasites, this one is. Um, somehow the eggs of the organism get ingested, and usually that happens in areas, uh, again, where wild animals go into the bathroom. Um, and you drink some water or something that's contaminated by the, by the feces, you get those eggs in you, the eggs hatch inside the digestive system and then crawl through the blood and insist themselves into the muscle, kind of dig themselves into the muscle of the organism and form these what we call cysts. That's a baby worm and it's just sitting there waiting. And what will happen is, if something eats the, the animal that it's in, 
um, it, it now has a new host and can get inside. That cyst will grow into an adult inside the body like of the new host. And stuff? Is that what it is? No, when you have a cyst, like something sticking off, it's not a. That's not it. That's a, It's the same word, but a different term. I'm just yes, wait, Hogan had to say those. Like boiling the water and stuff. Does that take care of this? Yes, it kills the eggs. The cause the cyst. Yes. Does it generally take care of like all worms? And yes. Anytime you boil something, that kills anything that's alive. Is that what it is? Anytime you boil something, that kills anything that's alive. Is it like purple skin around the actual worm muscle? This is the muscle that it's insisted in. Now, trichinella causes the disease called trichinosis. You may have heard of it. Trichinosis is the reason um, why Jews don't eat meat. Because they noticed a long time... Don't eat pork. They noticed a long time ago that trichinella cysts happen to occur a lot in pork. So they just made it a rule. They didn't know, they didn't know, that they didn't know about the cysts. They didn't have microscopes and stuff. But they knew that people, if they ate pork that wasn't cooked well enough, they'd get sick. So they get trichinosis. So that kind of became one of the rules. Um, nowadays, we know what causes it. And if you just cook the meat, you will not get sick. But a lot of times, you know, they have these big pig roasts and stuff where you're turning the pig. And a lot of times, the middle doesn't get cooked enough. And you can still get trichinosis from uncooked pork. What happens if like the host animal doesn't get eaten? Does this like, the cyst dies? Uh huh. It only ha only matters if the it can only transfer to the next host if the animal is eaten. Why can't it develop into an adult in its original host, like a pig or something? It's just that's just not the way it works. It has to, it has to go through a time period where it's forming the cyst and, and growing. If the pig had eaten like by a bear, would it? It get in the bear. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. The bears are immune. But yeah. I was wondering if it had to be in a human. <clears throat> Roundworms reproduce sexually. Uh, there are uh, uh, separate sexes, males and females that mate and exchange sperm in eggs, uh, the, it's, they have internal fertilization, which means the male puts the sperm inside the female, and the eggs become fertilized, and then the female lays the eggs. And then the larvae hatch from the fertilized eggs. And that, what we just showed, that cyst, that's a, that's a larvae that hatched from the egg. Like I said, there are trichinella worms are a type of roundworms. You've probably heard of hookworms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are some things your dog can get. These are, these are all sorts of, a lot of these are, are parasitic. Um, ascarid worms, I just passed around that lungworm, that's an ascaris. Um, pinworms, you've probably heard of those. That's a common human infection. Kids tend to get pinworms. Filarial worms are uh, another um, parasite that you often see in dogs. Or ringworm. Ringworm is a fungus. It's not a worm. Oh, now this is a disease caused by a roundworm. Why? It's called. Listen, it's called elephantiasis, and a lot of people mispronounce it. They call it elephantitis. Like the elephant. Hold on. Elephantiasis. Elephantiasis comes from a little roundworm that gets stuck in your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is a system in your body that transports uh, water, that transports water around your body and, and kind of washes off all your organs. And what happens is these little roundworms, you can get them, they're parasitic once more, they can clog up those lymphatic vessels. So you have tissue fluid water like going down to your legs and, and washing over your muscles and such and the water comes back up through these little vessels. If a roundworm is clogging up the vessel, the water can't get back up. So what happens is all the cells in your leg absorb the water and each cell becomes bloated. And so that's what, ha what you see here, that's his lower leg right there, and it's all bloated. 
If you stick it, it's not going to pop and leak water. Every cell is bloated there. And you can see his whole body has become inflamed. When was that taken? I don't know. So a long time ago? Yeah. 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 I just was. Yeah. Is this like Elephant Man? Elephantiasis. No, Elephant Man had a different disease. He had a genetic disorder what happened to his called uh, neurofibromatosis. He got drained. Again, he's got same thing before. He's got the little, little round worms that are blocking up his lymph vessels, and it causes the uh, it causes water to be held fluid, and each cell absorbs it, and it swells up. All of this tissue is dying because it can't get enough blood, so it's all brown. Yeah. So were those cells holding up water before they explode? Um, I don't know exactly what happens at that point. It's a good question. You could probably look it up. There's a little worm on the left, and there's someone who's infected on the right. You normally see this disease in Africa and Asia. It's not common in America. That's just nasty. What is, oh, it's one leg. That's his left leg. How do you walk? You don't. How do you get the yeah, Most know. people do. They go to the doctor and they take all this medication, but some people just don't. They don't go to doctors and they swell up. You can die from this. Video footage. In the deal of the Hunting Race, you want to move the race course from the Frisje. And it's a little bit of a sit on a permanent tour. Helaas is dat het gevolg van een ziekte die zijn testikels op ongekende groei door laten maken. Hij moet een schroten en potten. Hij had een flame scrotum. In het deel van de groei is er een man rijstronnen van een vliesje. En hij is er lekker bij gaan zitten op zijn permanente poep. Helaas is dat het gevolg van een ziekte die zijn testikels een ongekende groei door laten maken. Hij heeft een schroter en een foten. That's a true friend that helps you up the ladder. True friend. So that's called elephantiasis. It's a disease caused by these little roundworms. This is a different disease caused by roundworms. It's called a hydatid cyst. That lady's not pregnant. She's got roundworm cysts in her abdominal muscles. And you have to actually have them surgically removed. Those things are giant roundworm cysts. They're big containers full of roundworms. That's so good. If you broke that up, and there'd be a bunch of worms. Oh, nice. What game is that? Halo. Isn't that Operation? gross? Yeah, Halo. I got these pictures from uh, from a book. I took a class in college. I took a I took a class in college called human parasitology where we studied all these little worm diseases. And you can see if, if you ever want to look at it, I got it back there. There's the hydatid cyst picture right there. Um, but uh, there's some nasty diseases caused by these round worms. This is called a loa loa worm. It's embedded in the person's eye. That's a little worm larva right there. I got that. They got to dig that out. This is called a guinea worm. Guinea worm are little tiny round worms. And when you're standing in infected water, the little baby worm embeds in your skin. And again, it's, a, it's an internal parasite, and what happens is somebody infected goes to the bathroom in the water, a bunch of eggs turn into larvae in the water, the larvae embed in somebody else's foot that's standing in the water, or it's usually an animal, a deer or something that's standing in the water, but it could infect a human. And then it, uh, it grows and grows to a big size, and then when it senses that you're in water again, it'll try and swim out of your body.
Oh. And this is one coming out of the person's butt. Isn't that in the movie? Oh. It's called a guinea worm. Right so do you, would you have like a gigantic cut in your leg? Like yeah, that's a big sore uh -huh. that is crawling out of. The girl is like, don't And you can't pull it out because its body is real uh, delicate and it'll just break. So you, have to let it come out. you have to let it come out slowly for about three, three days. It hurts really bad. Could you like numb that area? So you would I think so, yeah. Or just oh, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That would be a There's another one coming out of somebody's oh, foot. Three days of pain or a lifetime. Wait, wait, wait. They just come out? Lifetime not They come out whenever you get into cold water. They like the, they want to swim out into the cold water. Why wouldn't you shift? There's three days in the cold. So uh, I'm going to take the water to make sure it's cold myself. Nematodes. Nematodes. <laughs> <laughs> Nematodes. Again, uh, not only can they listen, not only they can they infect animals, but they can also infect plants, pine trees, soybean crops, tomatoes. They often have huge nematode infections, and so we spend a lot of money spraying crops and things with poisons that'll kill the nematodes. The roundworm. Nematodes roundworm. Didn't we just look at that thing? And the yeah. That's the one I just passed around. Is that one so much? I don't know. Yeah. Certain nematodes are used to control the spread of cabbage worm caterpillars, Japanese beetle grubs, and many other crop plant pests. So we can use these things to help kill other pests. Um, that's that's called a, a, a biological solution. Nematodes eat flea larvae, controlling the flea population in yards. The nematodes aren't totally bad. I don't know if you know, fleas will lay their eggs in the soil, and the nematodes will eat the flea, the babies. So you'd have there'd be a lot more fleas if it weren't for nematodes. What do nematodes look like? Rat, nematodes are roundworms. This whole roundworm phylum is phylum nematoda. Everything we've been talking about today are I mean, I mean, nematodes. I know that. I know that. Yeah. Don't they eat his house one time? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah. 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 Now, <clears throat> along with the nematodes, we have organisms called rotifers. They are a little bit different from roundworms. They have. Uh, they have. They're also pseudo coelomates. Um, they have little tufts of cilia on their head that kind of beat in a circular manner. And that's why they call them rotifers because it looks like they have rotating heads kind of that spin like this. Um, here we show up here there's the cilia that spins. Yeah they have bilateral um, symmetry. symmetry. So you got they only can form equal heads and cut them right down the middle like that. I got some video footage of these things. Oh, oh it's head that was good. One more time, watch. Where is the head go? Did it eat its head? Uh, it kind of withdrew its head real fast. Why? I don't know. Maybe it was scared or something. Wish I had something. Why is such a short video? I don't know. That was lame. Let's see if the other one's better. Did you actually pay for that one, bro? No, I didn't pay for that. Right. What, did you illegally download it? No, we had it part that came with the book. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Rotifers get their name from the crown of cilia found on most species. These cilia beat in synchrony and resemble a turning wheel, hence the early name, wheel bearers. The cilia function in both swimming and creating currents that direct food into the mouth. See right there? Silly attorney. So that's a rotifer right there. Let me rewind this a little. The cilia function in both swimming and creating currents that direct food into the mouth.
We talked about these uh, earlier, and I never got to show you any because the season was wrong. You know what that is? Pollen grain thing. It's a pollen cone. And what I want you to do is I want you to go get a microscope slide. And I want you to take one of these pollen cones, and I want you to tap it down on your slide. Put a drop of water in a cover slip, and I want you to look at the pine pollen something we studied earlier. This is the male cones on a pine tree. The female cones are the big pine cones. Let's go take a look at that right now. Will, it's out.